Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas. Who do I have in the studio with me? Hey, this is Penny Dillon. I'm CEO of Oncosec Medical. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to know, I uh, recently heard, this was just recent last week, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, made a bold statement. He said we're in our, our fourth industrial revolution, and in that revolution there's technology and food and medicine. Tell me from the medicine front, doctor. To, sorry. So, yeah, th there's a huge amount of interest in what's happening on the medicine front in, in cancer treatment, and in, specifically in cancer treatment. I just came, actually, from this conference that's the largest conference in the world that's held every year in Chicago called ASCO, where there's a, a huge amount of interest in what cancer immunotherapy can do uh, to shift the treatment paradigm for people that, are, that, are, uh, that have cancer. It is. I'm meeting so many people that are cancer survivors. Uh, uh, people are surviving cancers, and it has to be through the therapy and the medicines and the new breakthroughs. Oh, absolutely. We've seen more progress in cancer in the last 30 years than ever before. So there's a tremendous amount of work that's been done. There's a tremendous amount of work that's still yet to be done. But there's also the research that's underway now and the drugs that have been approved in a specific class called immunotherapies where we're harnessing the body's innate power to fight cancer, I think they have the most promise for shifting that paradigm from where we've more kind of managed those symptoms to actually shifting towards a cure uh, towards these patients. So you'll see hopefully more people walking around cancer-free. I, I meet them every day. They call in, they write me, they contact me because I get to talk to great change makers like you. Tell me, what is immunotherapy, and how is it impacting these people? So you're, when you're talking about cancer immunotherapy, you're talking about using the body's innate power uh, of the immune system to fight cancer. And we know conventional therapies like chemotherapy and others that aren't very selective. They're treating the, the healthy cells as well as the cancer cells and exposing the body to a lot of toxicity. Well, with immunotherapy, you're actually treating the underlying disease. You're actually activating the immune system and activating these immune cells to f go and fight cancer more broadly in the immune system so that no cancer can be left behind and evade detection. In addition, you're actually training the immune system to remember what these cancer cells look like so that you have a memory-specific response, so you're getting a prolonged response after the, even the treatment is applied. I was told that June has been named Cancer Immunotherapy Awareness Month, correct? That's correct. June, June is Cancer Immunotherapy Month, so it's a very important month for us. But no, no special month in cancer. It's all year round. All year round. When a person has cancer, and I know many people in my audience are, 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 may have a loved one or themselves who are dealing with this, give me a ray of hope with the immunotherapy. You've said some great things. But I'm, a, I'm sure when you're stricken with anything, you're looking for any kind of light. Yeah, so it's interesting. With immunotherapy, we're seeing a tremendous amount of different drugs that are being developed. But one that I want to bring your attention to is a class called checkpoint inhibitors. And you might remember uh, a, 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 another patient, a high-profile patient, um, doc, uh, sorry, uh, former President Jimmy Carter was treated with a checkpoint inhibitor for melanoma and had a, an amazing response. So. This class of therapies actually is, is being well recognized and it's being used in across, across a number of different cancers. But what we've seen in the research is that it also is only affecting 
the minority of patients. So 30 to 40 percent of patients is where it has a response. 60 to 70 percent of patients still don't have a necessary response. And that's where companies like Oncosec and our technology, such as, such as Immunopulse IL-12, come in and help to bridge that and improve those response rates to get towards that 100 percent. Is this considered specialized medicine now that we're talking targeting uh, treating the patient as if it was an individual rather than just a group like chemotherapy? Absolutely. It's highly specialized. It's highly personalized. It's highly targeted. Immunotherapy is all about looking specifically at patient-specific type of immune responses at the end of the day. You and me and others are all different. We all have unique makeup. So that's where the power of immunotherapy is, is that we can target kind of the underlying um, immune system and take advantage of the different components that individuals have to uh, recognize and then attack the cancer. And at the same time, you need a little boost at the same time for, with these different immunotherapies and they have to work in concert with one another to get the right af effect. And that's where Oncosec is really focused on in, and specifically in melanoma. I wanted to tell you that we actually presented data recently at a, at a key scientific meeting uh, in melanoma where we showed the power of com combination of immunopulse IL-12 with this class of checkpoint inhibitors as immunotherapy and showed that 75% of the patients that we treated with this combination of approaches had a response in melanoma, so had a positive response. So that's a quite a staggering number when you look at that combination effect versus a single agent alone of only having 30 to 40%. That's great. Let me ask you this. This is a metaphysical question. Some people make it, some people don't. They, some people respond, some people don't. Mm -hmm. What does the patient need to bring to the table as far as mind, body, and spirit in order to get the results that you're looking for and they're looking for? I'm serious. Do they have to be uh, a good thinker? Do they have to uh, be willing to be a good eater? What do they have to bring to the table? Yeah, well, you bring a really great point uh, to the to the cancer treatment paradigm. I, I think um, that's a tough one, a t very tough question to, to answer, but at the same time, it's a very important one because a part of this is an attitude, right? And we all have experienced patients that have uh, de uh, people that we know that have experienced cancer, and we hear a lot of these different stories. So there is a degree of positivity that's required and bringing uh, a sense of attitude um, with treatment. At the end of the day, these drugs that are being utilized to treat cancer, especially these immunotherapies, have a lot of promise. They have, uh, they're showing effect. At the same time, they may not work for every single person, and there's some people that they just don't respond. So we, 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 there has to be a, a, um, a much more um, holistic approach, I mean, meaning that there's comprehensive kind of care with combination of therapies and other things that can help manage the disease for different types of, of, of indications in cancer and different stages of cancer. And we hope that these patients can have the best experience possible when they're managing such an aggressive disease. To come full circle, as I stated when I opened this conversation that uh, the CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, said we're in a, we're in a revolution here. We're in a fourth re revolution, technology, food, medicine. Where's, where, where do you see immunotherapy going? It's chemotherapy, you mean? Yeah, so chemotherapy, uh, we, we, we don't, I, I think chemotherapy has a place, but over time, yes, it may become more obsolete compared to immunotherapy. So were you asking about immunotherapy? So immune, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, so, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to ask you chemo. You're right. You're on the right track. Yeah, yeah, there okay. are two things out there. Yeah. Where are they going? Is, is chemo going to go by the wayside and we're going to become the specialized medicine and cure yeah. more people? I. I first thought, thought you said nemotherapy, and I was like, what therapy is that? <laughs> but, you know, yeah, absolutely. So chemotherapy, we're moving. Uh, it's definitely, you know, potential for more obsolescence. But immunotherapy uh, is definitely the future. And we're seeing that shift in the cancer treatment paradigm where the majority of patients will be treated with immunotherapy first and then maybe combined still with, uh, with chemotherapy or other immunotherapies. There's not a single pill that will be the panacea for cancer. It will be some combination of therapies. Thank you, doctor. And is there a place for my audience who's listening uh, to go on the web and find more information? Yeah, I just want to make one correction. So I'm not a doctor, but that's just the side point. Uh, okay. You can find more information uh, around what we're doing is um, 
uh, at, uh, in melanoma and other, and other cancers at oncosec.com. It's O-N-C-O-S-E-C.com. And then more generally, if you're looking for information on cancer, feel free to check out cancerresearch.org. It's a great resource. All right. Thank you so much for that great information. You're not a doctor, but you seem to know as much as one. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.